Okay, so in continuing drawing with the, the pen tool and trying to make some customized shapes. So very often you have to plot something and then go back to refine it, which you do just by double clicking on the path and then editing it. And I can use Command Z on my Mac to zoom in. And I have to be careful scrolling with my trackpad. So I'm gonna use the space bar instead and kind of pan and scroll around. So you see how my curve there is a little off. So if I double click, I can see the anchor. I click on the anchor point, I can see the curve. If I hold down Command, I can alter one side of the curve separate to the other, but that gives me a little dent in it. So instead, I'm gonna hold down Shift and do it, and that will even out the curve. And then I might just have to move it. And then you shift again, just to lengthen it on one side. So a lot of vector imaging is about curves. Which are not all that simple to do well. And because remember a curve is often made from two points. So there's two handles I'm adjusting here. So the only one that really needs to change direction is this one. And this one I can use shift to flatten out. Probably about there. And this one I use command to shorten it. And that's going to give me the most even curve through. Then I have this curve, which I use Command, get to a point. I can move, click and move that little beak point. Sometimes, depending on what you're doing, these points are really exact. I can also remember round certain corners if I want to. I think that one might be a little rounded. And that's not the same as changing it to curves. Then I go vertical, can bring that down a little bit more. Or I go horizontal, I go vertical. And now I'm going to add points. So let's see, I want to add a point here where the glasses change direction. I can make that horizontal. And then I want to, whoops, I need to not use my trackpad. Oh, that's annoying. Ah. So if you're using a trackpad, don't, uh, don't use two fingers to navigate. I'm gonna try to learn. Otherwise that can happen, it just, it goes back. But if that does happen, that's what's nice about being logged in, is you can go to your profile, and it saves your work. Just as untitled until you export it with a name, but it saves what you've been doing. So luckily I didn't lose any of that, it even got those nice curves I just did. Okay, so now there's a lot more kind of complex shape that's going on here. I can work it from both sides, but in order to edit it, I need to double click, and then I need to click and drag on new anchor points that I'm creating. and I can kind of edit them as I go. Make a new point, drag it into place, alter its curves. If I want to alter them independently, like I do in this case, I'm going to hold down Command and change the direction of it. 
add a new point, move it into place, hold down command, alter its curve. So a lot of pointing and clicking. It's really designed for the mouse. If I think I need more of a shallow curve there, I can work it on both sides. But I can also add an anchor point. Sometimes that's needed. I'm going to bring it around. But it's good to get away with fewer very often. And clean logo design. So I'll leave it there for now. Man, I need to get used to not using my two fingers. So I'm going to hold down spacebar instead and pan that way. Double click, get your anchor points. You can move it. Maybe I'll just make a few here before I start altering curves. These really complicated shapes. We're in the very loose version here. But now I think I have all the anchor points I need in order to get the underside of these shapes. So remember, you can double click to turn them from curves into straights. And what I want is a curve on this side and more of a straight on this side. So I just bring the curve all the way to the base. And then I want to play with the curve on the other side of it like that. Go ahead and flatten that out. I'll hold down shift and just lengthen it on this side. Then I'll play with taking out the curve on this side by moving it all the way in. We're even just changing this to straights. Change this to straights. So my, my, might as well go ahead and make that horizontal. Might as well go ahead and make this perfectly vertical. So you'll see it kind of tells you it flashes blue when you're perfectly horizontal or vertical. Turn this to curves. Turn this to curves. Whoops, I accidentally added a point. Command Z. I'm trying to adjust for these curves. I'm using shift. I think that works. It will also show you when you're lining up with other points, which can be helpful. Sometimes you want to, sometimes you don't. Because I'm trying to keep this all smooth, I'm holding down shift for all of it. 
and you can always just click and drag the point. Like so. Okay, I'm going to change this to a curve, change that to a curve, but then use command and turn that back into a straight, just on that side. And remember, you can select multiple points. So if I hold down shift, I can click on this point and this point. And then if I click on either of them, it will move them both. That's a little tricky to get used to, especially when they're outputting curves, but it can be helpful. You can also use your arrow keys and kind of shift them both. Turn this side into a straight. Even this one out. If I want it to be a perfect arch, I need to line up the two anchor points like that. And then set this at a 45 degree angle. Probably add an anchor point, honestly. Go ahead and make it just like this to get a perfect arch. Then just add an anchor point right in the middle, drag it up, and just use shift to even out the sides. So you don't even need to use shift. Just pull it and you'll get the perfect arch equal on both sides. So it's all these little fine fine tunings. There's a lot of times I have to just straighten out one side of a curve. Remember you can always use command Z get back to where you were before. So you will make mistakes. And we're not going for professional quality logos. We're going for your best attempt learning these programs for the first time. You can see how easy it is to get really picky. And sometimes it's just easier to plot more points and then delete the ones you don't need. And then I can just make an, a nice even arch in between. Like that, I'm going for these drips. Okay, so now I've got that big shape. Problem is, there's a lot of cutouts needed for that shape. So that's what I'm going to be showing you next. So if I turn that into a fill, how can I see what it's covering up? Well, I can also, just like I did for the image, I can also change the opacity for a path. Come on. And so I'm going to take that opacity down, and then I'm going to, to make an oval on top of it. I'll just use the standard ellipse tool. Just draw an ellipse, just like transform tool. I can tilt it. I can use the arrow keys to nudge it. And that looks about right. I can also, you know, check the opacity of it. So I made it a little too big, so now I can shrink it down. Just like using the shape tools, making your emojis in exercise two. Okay, now that's a perfectly smooth ellipse. Now here's the problem. I'm gonna take that up to full opacity. I'm gonna take the path underneath, 